Give me something non-subjective. Give me something objective. Something that is objective truth. So he's got nothing. That's why, guys, I stand on the Word of God, revelational epistemology. How do we know truth? Because God has revealed truth to us in His Word. Amen? Praise be to God. We can stand firmly on the Word of God. We don't have to guess through this world. We don't have to guess in this life. The Bible says that God has given us eternal life in Jesus Christ. This is the testimony. God gave us eternal life. This life is in His Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. These things have I written to you who believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. Right? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Whoever believes is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, for he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, this is the verdict, that light has come into the world, but men love the darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. Amen? Word of God, guys. Hearken to the Word of God. Don't be like the foolish person who built their house upon the uncertainties of life. The rains came, the floods made of rose, the winds, they beat against the house. And it fell disastrously, guys. Don't swing out into eternity based upon your own foolish life. How much do you know why do you reject Jesus Christ? On what basis? If you reject Christ, do you reject Christ, sir? He's the greatest man who ever lived. Jesus made a greater impact on this world than any emperor, than any pharaoh, than any president. Jesus has. Amen. Why? Why did Christ make such a tremendous impact on this world? What? Yeah, he is. He's the holy man of God, right? He's the lamb who is the goat, I, I agree. He's the greatest of all time, right? Jesus Christ. That's a, that's a good designator. That's apt. Right. Jesus is the greatest of all time. Not just um, for a sport. I don't know Christ is the goat. He is the greatest of all time because he is the creator. He's the first and last. He's the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. And by Him and through Him and for Him and to Him are all things. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Through Him all things were created. How do you feel about David? You ask how you feel about David? We love David, we love everybody. Right? We want them to repent and trust Christ. You know, we love fornicators. We want them to repent and trust Christ. Right? We love drunkards. We want them to repent and trust Christ. Amen. We love proud people. We love narcissists. We want them to repent and trust Christ. Hallelujah. So by Christ all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was the light. And the light was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness. The darkness has not comprehended it. The darkness has not overcome it. Here in Athens, Georgia tonight, the darkness of a secular world, a world that hates God, a world that gives God the bird, a world that kills God to get lost, we've got a better plan, God, we've got a better way, God. The light of the gospel of Jesus Christ shines here in that darkness tonight, and the darkness has not overcome it. The darkness has not comprehended it. Amen. It's impossible, guys. It's impossible for darkness to extinguish light. Did you know that? Darkness cannot extinguish light. It's impossible. Light shines in the darkness. The darkness has not overcome it. So we... God puts us in a decision posture. What will you do with Jesus Christ? What will you do with Jesus Christ? What will you do with the man who is undeniably the greatest man who ever lived. What will you do with him? What will you do with the claims that Jesus Christ died on a cross, 
That's a historical fact, by the way. It's not speculation, it's not a fairy tale, it's not a myth, it's not a legend. It's a plain, historical, undeniable, incontrovertible historical fact that Jesus of Nazareth died on a bloody Roman cross on the eve of Passover. He kind of skipped to the spoiler there, but amen. He rose from the dead. Right. Spoiler alert. He rose from the dead. And he's coming back, amen. He's coming back. So guys, we want you to be ready for his return. I hope you're ready. It's our prayer that you're ready for Christ to come back because he is coming back, guys. And that he fulfilled over 300 prophecies in the Tanakh, in the Hebrew Bible. Jesus Christ fulfilled over 300 prophecies that were given hundreds, in some cases even over a thousand years before he was born, proving that he was and is the Messiah, right? Jesus is the anointed one, he's the promised one, the one God promised would come and crush the head of the serpent. When he came into this world, he lived some 33 years. Unlike you and unlike me, Jesus Christ never sinned in thought, word, or deed. Not once. Jesus, every minute of his life, every moment of his life, he loved the Lord his God with all of his heart, mind, soul, and strength. The first and the great command, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And Jesus said the second great command is likened to it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If we're honest, guys, you and I have never lived a single day of our life meeting that criterion. Even the best hour of your life, even the most noble hour of my life or your life, the most giving, the most sacrificial hour of my life or your life, still fell short of that standard. But Jesus Christ never fell short, guys. He perfectly fulfilled the perfect requirements of the law of God every moment of every day of his life. So he was uniquely qualified being the God-man, being a representative of humankind in human flesh, but also being the Son of God, a representative of the one whom against me sinned. Jesus was uniquely qualified to go to bear our sins in his body on the cross, to serve as that sin substitute, to drink down the cup of God's wrath on our behalf. Wait, where's the mark? That's what the crucifixion was about. The cross of Jesus Christ was no accident. It was the plan of God from the foundation of the world to send his son into the world to die for sinners, to be buried, and as a young man just said a minute ago, to rise again on the third day. The tomb is empty, guys. We serve a risen Savior who is in the world today. The Lord Jesus Christ. Siddhartha Gautama Buddha died and stayed dead. Hare Krishna died and stayed dead. Muhammad died and stayed dead. Charles Darwin died and stayed dead. Jesus Christ died, guys, and three days later, the tent was empty. <laughs> save lives, but Jesus Christ saves souls. Let Jesus Christ save your soul tonight. The evidence is he is the Son of God. The evidence is the tomb is empty. The evidence is Jesus Christ rose again. The evidence is Jesus Christ is coming back, guys, and we don't know when. The Bible says he comes as a thief in the night, right? I don't know. You don't know when he's coming back. But we strongly implore you, we encourage you, as Christ's ambassador, to be ready, guys. Be ready for that day. Be ready for his return. If you don't know Christ, if you're not obeying Christ, if you're not following Christ, get right with God tonight, guys. Humble yourself before the cross. Receive grace and mercy. Yield your life to Christ. Give life. God, give Christ your broken life. There's an old hymn, Give Christ your broken life so marred by sin. I know my life was a mess. I was marred by sin. I was a wreck in so many ways. We don't wait until we become better people to come to Christ. We come to Christ just as we are, and then he changes us. If you're homosexual tonight, come to Christ, and he'll change you. If you're a fornicator tonight, come to Christ, and he'll change you. If you're a drunkard tonight, pot smoker, come to Christ, and he'll change you. If you're a porn freak tonight, come to Christ, and Jesus Christ will change you guys. If you're a glutton, if you're proud, if you're a narcissist, come to Christ. 
will change you. He'll give you a new heart. He'll make you a new creation. This is the good news, the good message of the gospel, guys. We plead with you tonight. Turn from your sin. Trust Jesus Christ. Be born again. Repent and believe the gospel. God bless you.